All right, my name is Captain Irving, and you're in F Troop. Now, oh, kitty. There's an urgent smoke signal message for O'Rourke and Agarn. But as we know, Sergeant O'Rourke is the only one who can read it. When are you going to learn how to read smoke? I can't even learn to read tom-toms. The message really is urgent. The still is broken. The Hakawis don't have the wherewithal to make repairs. So that means there's no whiskey until somebody fixes it. And we're looking at the two somebodies right now. We got to get up there and get that still fixed and fixed quick. We can water the whiskey for a while, but... Start watering the water, they might get suspicious. Wire a message to Lily O'Reilly. Maybe she can spare some. Can't you fix a little still when it breaks down? Please, please, not so loud. Wake up this morning with big headache. Listen, we're partners, but we can't make any money if you keep drinking up all the product. Well, now that the still is busted and there aren't any profits to drink up, maybe they'll be able to fix the thing once they sober up. Besides, I keep telling you, Indians ain't supposed to drink. Yeah. Pale face propaganda. Indian drink long before white man. Yeah? You think we sell New York Island for $24 if we sober? Forget everything you ever learned about diversity among the first American tribes. The Indians were a monolithic unit that spanned the entire continent. They had a communication system that the white man could only dream of, and everybody knew everybody else, and they all got along. That's how Wild Eagle knows the story. His cousin from New York told him about it over INN, Engine News Network. The truth is we know precious little about that particular purchase. Exactly one document related to it survives, and it's just a letter, not a deed or anything like that. Peter, however he pronounced it, gave some unnamed goods worth 60 Dutch guilders to a group of locals, ostensibly in exchange for the land. At some point, somebody converted that into dollars of their time and came up with $24. Except money value doesn't stay static, as we know. We've seen in some of the Superman episodes that $100,000 in 1954 was equivalent to a million dollars today. So in today's money, that $24 is more like a thousand, which is still a heck of a deal. Thing is, nobody ever said those locals had the right to sell the land or anything else. One persistent story says they didn't even live there, they were just passing through, but when these idiot white men started asking idiot questions, the fellows decided to rip them off a little. Another story says that, like many of the tribes that originally inhabited this continent, owning the land was a concept they couldn't wrap their heads around. The land belonged to everyone and every living creature. Owning it would be like trying to own the sun or the moon. So they took the goods and said, yeah, sure and went on their way shaking their heads. Whatever the truth is, assuming it even happened, that so-called purchase had no legal standing in Europe and it sure didn't have anything to back it up in the Americas. I seriously question whether it ever really happened or if it was something a quick-thinking explorer came up with to make a name for himself. In any case, the main thing we've learned here is that all Indians knew all other Indians from coast to coast. It's the same with Canadians today. There's still only one thing to do, pack it up and take it back to the fort where they can fix it. They'll hide it in the NCO club and get the parts they need in town. But before they can get it into the building, they're interrupted. Colonel Watkins is approaching the gate! Not another inspection? Is this really the only thing these high-ranking officers have to do at the height of the Indian Wars? But that's not why he's here. We have positive proof that the Indians in this locale have been obtaining liquor. Your orders, Captain. Find the source of that liquor, and when you do, destroy it. This one hits a sore spot with me. As many of you know, I'm also a trained and published Bible scholar. The first Bible school I went to was a little spitwad operation in central Montana that doesn't exist anymore. Isolated, a bastion of ultra-conservatism, anybody who didn't agree with their 20 or so point doctrinal statement probably wasn't a real Christian. In 1978, the school was also in deep financial trouble. They would only last another three years or so, and it was almost another 30 years before a coalition of former faculty and staff raised enough money to pay off all the school's debts. Look up mismanagement in the dictionary and you may find a photo of this place. Anyway, 
One of the required classes was called Philosophy of Science. The instructor, I can't call him a teacher or professor because the only reason he led that class is because nobody else wanted to do it, stood flat-footed one day and tried to explain to us genetically why, as he put it, Indians can't hold their liquor. There was a lot of racist stuff that went on there, but that one in particular stuck in my craw. This little project of the colonel's doesn't help any. But it's worse, the colonel is going to stay here until Captain Parmenter finds that still. Just one minute. What is that under that blanket? It looks like some sort of copper tubing. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, sir. Copper tubing. That's what he's called. Uh, yes, sir. We were, uh, we're planning to build a hot water heater. That hot water for the men's baths. <laughs> Good. Good. A clean soldier is a happy soldier. I've never understood the expression hot water heater. Shouldn't that just be water heater? If the water is already hot, why do you need to heat it? A house-to-house -house search in town turns up nothing. Searching the base also turns up nothing, especially since O'Rourke and Agarn are the ones who searched the NCO club. The captain couldn't do it himself because officers aren't allowed in the NCO club. It's in his manual. Aha! Uh Aha, -huh. uh -huh, sir. Right here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right here in the manual, page 82, article number 364A, it clearly states, in cases of emergency, the commanding officer of a post is permitted in the NCO club. With a proviso or two that our NCOs can't get around this time. There's only one thing to do. Now, wait a minute, sir. I just remembered something. Yes, I'm positive. Article 364-A on page 82 has been revised. I think you'll find the revision on page 102 under Article 3-C. Really? Yes. We wouldn't want to do anything non-military. I mean, we, we must go by the manual, mustn't we, sir? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Here, I'll, I'll check it. Stall while Agarn finds anywhere else to hide the still. O'Rourke leads the captain on a merry chase through the manual, but ultimately he has to admit he may have been mistaken. There's nothing Agarn can do with the still except load it back on the horse. But there are two nice kegs of whiskey also sitting there, and they won't fit on the horse. Suddenly everybody's really thirsty. Man, something's happening to this water. <laughs> Sure has. <laughs> Best tasting water on the planet. Very tasty. <laughs> the only good thing I've found around the post, the water. <laughs> I have a feeling at least some of the men know what's in that water. But the colonel has me puzzled. He's going around looking for whiskey, but he doesn't have any idea what it smells or tastes like. Or maybe it's different because he's a white guy and he has the genetics to handle it. <laughs> More of this tasty water, sir? Thank you, Captain. Oh, poor. You heard Now, about that still, sir. Now, don't you worry, I'll just, I'll keep looking until I find it. <laughs> What's here? <laughs> yep, his superior white genetics are handling it much better than the Indians could. Next morning, the entire troop, well, you can guess. Everybody's whispering because it hurts to talk at normal volume, or listen at normal volume. Captain, if you don't get to the bottom of this... <laughs> this fantastic occurrence, I will have you shot at sunrise. Oh, would you? I don't see you doing any better, Colonel, so maybe we need to shoot both of you. Just do it quietly. Like that for? Darn it, sergeant, you're recognized. He wants to go up to the Hakawi camp in disguise and ask some questions about whiskey. O'Rourke will tell him about a shortcut that's actually a long cut, while Agarn takes the real shortcut to get up there and warn Wild Eagle. Hi, Wilton. Darn it, Janie, you recognize me. What are you dressed up like that for? Well, I'm gonna go up to the Indian village. Maybe I can get them to talk about where they're getting their whiskey. 
Well, you sure are going the long way. Oh? Well, Sergeant O'Rourke said this was a shortcut. He knows better than that. Well, why would he tell me this was a shortcut? I wonder if they're trying to keep something from me. Now, would they do a thing like that? They even let you search their NCO club. You can't get much more open and honest than that. Chief Wild Eagle, you don't know where an old trader could get a little drink of fire water, do you? Wild Eagle not know what you're talking about, Captain Permanter. <laughs> Darn it, Chief, you recognize me. Next time, put on a wig and borrow some of Jane's clothes. Maybe it'll be more convincing. Wild Eagle says, we don't have any fire water. Parmenter wants to ask the medicine man. Right now, the medicine man is interrogating a patient about some stolen items. You take medicine. Sometime medicine man plenty smart. Medicine he give loosened tongue. Make crazy cat tell truth. But the medicine makes him tell the truth? You're right, that's not Edward Everett Horton. He was only in six episodes, I haven't been able to find out why. That's J. Pat O'Malley, another well-known character actor with an equally distinctive voice. He'll have the job for a whopping two episodes. I figured the job was either too stressful with all those people constantly wanting attention, or Wild Eagle is impossible to work for. And Captain Parmenter is going to steal that medicine and give O'Rourke an agar a dose. Have some of this new tonic I came across. It's very refreshing. Well, no, thank you, sir. Not, uh, not just now for me. <laughs> no matter what I do, sir. Thank you. No matter. He only needs one of them to talk. Have you seen a still hidden around someplace, Corporal? <laughs> I sure have. Hey, God. Where? We've got the prettiest little still you ever did see right in our NCO club. Busted. Let's go take a look at it. Well, maybe you're right, Sergeant. He has been in the sun too long. It's nice they are off the hook, but what happened to it? Three braves sneaked down last night and take from club. Yeah, but I still don't get it. I mean, how did you know that we were... We see, Captain, steal herbs, make men tell truth. Me figure he would give to you and make you talk. That's great, but it's still broken and the Colonel is still hanging around the fort. He's not leaving until he finds the source of the alcohol in the area. Suddenly, O'Rourke has an idea that's just crazy enough it might work. It's unbelievable, sir. I have found out where the Indians are getting their whiskey from. There it is, sir. What? Sergeant, that's only a spring. Well, I thought so too, sir, but just wait till you taste it. That Dobbs. Sure enough, the water tastes just like whiskey. Most amazing natural phenomenon any of them has ever seen. Yes, sir, Mother Nature does do some incredible things. <laughs> hey, it's made from natural ingredients. That makes it a natural phenomenon. How it gets there isn't important. Some well-placed dynamite will take care of the whiskey spring and send the colonel on his way happy. He's not the only one who's happy. Uh, message from Chief Wild Eagle. What to say? Still fixed good, much whiskey. Love, white brother. <laughs> they must be having a real party up there. How can you tell? Every word misspelled. Yeah, I know. But what kind of gag would that make? If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.